Let's start from verse 22 before we go. To, and straight away, Jesus constrained the disciples to get into the ship and go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitude away. Verse 23, please. And when he has sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And in the evening, he was calm. He was there alone. The word constrained there. He compelled them. He forced them. For the first time, Jesus sent his disciples and never went with them. And he was aware that, they are going to, that there was going to be a storm. But he refused to follow them. There are certain trials in life that Jesus will not change it because you are his beloved servant. No matter how good you are, the trial that you have to go through, you will go through. For God so loved the world and yet he gave his only begotten son that he loved. Despite he loved him, he could not spare him. He allowed him to die. Brutalized, naked, shamified, bruised, disgraced. Hear me. There are certain storms that prayer can't stop. Fasting can't stop. It is a process for progress. Don't tell me about what you are going through if you don't understand that there is a set up for a comeback to set you on fire for the next level. He constrained them. He constrained them. He constrained them. There are three types of storm. Number one, divine storm. This is a storm that God himself designed, orchestrates for the purpose of training you into maturity to discover your purpose. To discover your purpose. And when this storm comes, no matter your prayer, it will not stop the storm from coming. That's the kind of storm. The one that came to Job, he lost all his children, lost all his property, permitted by God in order to show the value and the maturity of Job. Another kind of storm is demonic storms. These are storms that the enemy have programmed in order to cause you to derail and can be permitted under the permissive will of God, but not to destroy you. Many are fall when they are under a demonic storm. Number three type of storm is self-inflicted storm. Storms that came due to lack of knowledge. Storm that came due to lack of vision. Storm that came due to lack of capacity. The Bible says in verse 22 that he sent the multitude away. Ah. <laughs> and he sent the multitude away. There are levels you will enter in your life that the multitude must not follow you. When your life is too noisy, you become a noisemaker. Impact is not created around the place of noise. Impact is created in the place of separation, concentration, and consecration. Hear me, God will separate you, consecrate you, to concentrate on you. Now hear me, there are times in your life that you must withdraw from the multitudes. The Bible says, Multitudes of multitudes are in the valley of decision. Multitudes of multitudes are in the valley of decisions. Ah, most of you have died because you are always trying to showcase your life around the multitude. 
Sometimes hide yourself. Jesus withdrew from the crowd. He withdrew from his disciples and went to pray. There are certain assignments in life. There are certain prayers. There are certain battles that you don't fight with prayer warriors. That you don't fight with partners and agreement. There are certain battles you withdraw alone. To the other side, you don't need the 12 disciples. You don't need 5,000 men. You need to be alone with God. And when you get to that level, you stand in and say, Lord, it's just me and you. Me and you. Lord, I want to know you for myself, by myself, for my destiny. It's not about Papa Joshua Igila, not about champion, not about any man of God. I want to encounter you. I want to know you. I want to see you highly seated up in the light of your glory. I want to feel you. I want to feel your power. I want to know you more. I just don't want to read from a preacher. Hear from a preacher. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you by myself. If you don't get to that place where you know God for yourself, anybody can deceive you with their theory, philosophy, and erratic teaching and manipulative standards. Some levels of life you cannot enter with everybody. The blind see. The cripple worked. The issue of blood stopped. And the crowd saw him. Darius' daughter was healed. I mean, raised from dead. When he said, Tali, Takumi, damsel, I mean, arise. Lazarus was dead for four days. He called him forth that they may believe. But there are miracles he performed and he charged them not to tell anybody. It is not everything that happened in your life that everybody must know. He is Alpha and Omega but he was still hiding his testimonies. He was telling them do not let anybody know. He was on the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter, James and John they saw Moses appear. They saw Elijah appear. He charged them do not tell anybody body about this side. There is a level you get to because of the next level. Some of you have died because you have exposed yourself to storm before time. Hide yourself. Learn to hide yourself. There are things that everybody must not see. Hide it. Premature manifestation will lead to premature death. Hide yourself. Hide your testimony. There are testimony that you need to hide. Allow them to mature before you expose them. And if you must expose them, don't expose them to giant killers, baby killers, assassination of glory, killers of dream, killers of revelation. Hide it. When the testimony comes and they cannot abort it, then let them see. Your nine month is hidden. The baby is hidden. But when the day the baby comes, you cannot hide the baby. Wait! Do not announce your pregnancy in weeks, in months. Allow your pregnancy Nancy to develop. Anytime you see a woman bell, belly big, the baby is already matured. Even at eight months, the baby can come out alive. Hear me. If God wants you to expose, he will allow the pregnancy of your success to develop with bone structures, capacity, capillary, and ability. Hear me. Don't kill your baby in the embryo stage. There are people that will not live your life until you send them away. He sent the multitude away. Hear me? The parasitical crowd, as long as they eat bread, they will not leave you. They are not around you because you are good. 
They are around you because of the bread. They don't care whether the bakery is on fire. As long as they can eat bread, they will stay around you. Be very careful of people singing your praise because of what they will eat. As long as they can eat, they will sing your praise. The day you don't give them bread, they will disappear. Where are the 5,000 men when they caught Jesus? None of them show up to defend the man that fed them. We are in a world where people don't want to identify with your shame, but they want to identify with your bread. There are bread eaters, and bread eaters are destiny eaters. They are killers of glory. As long as they can eat bread from you, you are good. The day the bread stop, they turn around. When they escort you to your grave, they will turn back. Don't allow the applause and ovation of men to move you. One million likes on social media does not mean you are liked. 10,000 comments on social media does not mean you are important. Life is not built on social praises. Real life is not around the multitude. It's built around few. Don't allow the applause of the multitude make you miss the 12 disciples. There are people that are around you not because of bread. They are around you because of who you are.